Hello, I'm Terry. Some of my earliest recollections, when I was five years old, going back 65 years ago, is that of Perth's public transport system, and especially the trains. We lived on Walshpool Road, about halfway between the railway station and the Albany Highway bus services. In the early 1950s, the trams ran right past our front door. We have a reminder of these trams in Whiteman Park. They are one old per tram in working order. They ran down Welshpool Road and terminated just before the railway line. I was amazed at the two grooves in the tarmac caused by the trams failing to stop in time at the end of their rails. It looks like the drivers at Whiteman Park have been practicing these same skills as well. I spent many hours as a boy hanging around the Welshpool station watching the ADG rail cars, some of them still in their original livery of dark green with black and yellow stripes on each end. I remember a lot of shunting went on there, usually handled by a DM or DD class steam locomotive. These tank locomotives seem to be equally comfortable pulling passenger trains as well as local goods. The absolute highlight of my day is watching the Bunbury to Perth Australian Express train go handling through Wilsport Station, usually with the next class locomotive in charge. I still remember the noise, the wind and the dust which came up as it rocketed past. In the city, it was the trolley buses which got my attention. Unlike the noisy diesel buses of the day, they were quiet, with just a little bit of buzzing hum and a few clicks as the driver accelerated. My passion, however, was always the trains. In the 1970s, I bought a Super 8 movie camera and a Philips open reel portable tape recorder. I often took these out trackside and recorded movie and sounds of the ADGs, ADGVs, ADK rail cars, X-Class locomotives and anything else that happened to run on the rails at that time. On the 1st of September 1979, the government closed down the Perth to Fremantle railway line. The week before, I took my movie camera out and recorded the action on the line then. But before we have a look at that, I want to show you some of the train action on the other two lines. We'll start with the Armadale line first, then we have a little bit of a look at stuff on the Midland line. Now, I would like to share some of my journey with you. The sounds are genuine, although they weren't recorded on the camera itself, they were recorded on an open reel tape recorder. And I've matched them up to give the best effect. I hope you enjoy it, sit back and relax. <laughs> First of all, we'll have a look at the Perth railway station before catching the Armadale train to head south. In those days, we bought tickets from the window outside of the station in the forecourt.
we walk right up to the west end of the platforms, the carriage sheds could be seen to the right of the main line. In the 1960s, it was quite a regular occurrence to see steam hauling the passenger services and also coming through on the centre tracks hauling goods trains. Perth ran quite a few trains to country towns, including Albany, Geraldton, Bunbury, Kalgoorlie and other places. I remember four of them, two going to Kalgoorlie and two others to Bunbury. Kalgoorlie had the Westland, which connected with the Eastern States train at Kalgoorlie, and they also had the Kalgoorlie to bring the local people to Perth. The train which left Perth for Bunbury in the morning was the Australind. At about the same time, the train in Bunbury, the shopper, left to come to Perth. Let's now catch a train out along the Armadale Line. Claysbrook Station is our first stop. It was originally named East Perth, but was renamed Claysbrook after the standard gauge East Perth Terminal was built in 1969. In 1984, the station building was relocated to Whiteman Park to form their main station building there. From the old pedestrian bridge, we get a good look at the railcar depot. Let's go back towards the city for about a kilometre and join the cab of an XA class locomotive on a Queen's Park first stop express train. It was a real battle to hold the camera steady as the old XA class locomotive bucked about like a draft horse trying to race while still attempting to pull a cart behind it.
Let's return back over the bridge to Claysbrook Station and watch the Australian on its morning journey to Bunbury. Some of the old drivers I spoke to regard the X-Class as an honorary steam locomotive. Once we pass under the East Parade Bridge, we come to the old East Perth coal-fired power station on the left. They once had their own dedicated electric locomotive, but once that retired, they then used the Dominion River Z-Class shunter to move the coal wagons about. The health and safety rep who hides behind the empty coal wagons will be having kittens by now. This wooden, single track structure is called the Bunbury Bridge. It was built as a temporary structure in 1930 to replace the original bridge. The shopper brings passengers up from Bunbury in the morning. It had purpose built matching locomotives and carriages. When these carriages were retired, they were replaced by non matching rolling stock to keep the train going. The locomotives were named after West Australian wildflowers. The two I remember are Grevillea and Hovia. Let's rejoin our XA class locomotive as we head south to Oak Street Station to have a look at the action there. Oak Street Station was a great place to watch the express trains running non-stop between Queen's Park and Perth. We are still running express as we charge through Wellsport Station at our official top speed of 50 miles an hour, or if it was today, 80 kilometres an hour.
Welshpool Station, where I grew up, had a busy goods yard with spur lines going into the old munition works to a siding near James Hardy, several lines going into the grain silos and a wheat unloading dock alongside of Seven Oak Street. After watching an XB class leave Wilspool along the branch line to Kudal, we go to Queen's Park as our driver gets the XA underway for the final stage to Armadale. Our next class departs Cannington bound for Perth. We will now rejoin our locomotive for the last leg into Armadale. The last steam locomotive ran in Western Australia in 1971. Three years later, in 1974, the Hotham Valley Tourist Railway, which wanted to preserve the Pinjarita Dwelling Railway Line, badly needed some locomotives. Their choice of locomotives had to take into account that the dwelling up line has the steepest grade in Western Australia, presenting quite an operational challenge in wet weather.
in 1976, they commissioned their first locomotive, which they brought to Perth for steam specials. We are witnessing the first steamer to return to the rails as it approaches Armadale. In 1988, they recommissioned W908, which they also brought to Perth to run steam specials. From the bridge on Leach Highway, to the accompanying sound of traffic, we watched the train approaching. through Wilkesport Station and over the Wilkesport Road at Level Crossing. We catch up with 9.45 a few days later at Armadale on a steam special as it returns to Perth. We will now briefly set out along the Midland Line. The Midland Railway Company, operators of G and F class locomotives, which were later taken over by the Western Australian Government Railways. Today, we have been lucky enough to have seen two of them passing through the East Perth Terminal. The following train is 945 Steam Special returning to Perth.
From the platform at Midland Station, we can watch the railway workshops in action. At the west end is the graveyard of deceased locomotives awaiting internment. We have returned to Perth for a journey out along the Fremantle Line. Fremantle trains generally left for platforms 1 and 2. Perth Station, with its classic architecture, was built in 1881. The intersection of Wellington and William Street is at the bottom of the Horseshoe Bridge. The last Governor Class Railcar, which operated some country services, was withdrawn in 1962. About 70 years after this picture was taken, steam once again returned across the bridge into Fremantle. Thank you.
At the end of this week, on the 1st of September 1979, the trains will be replaced by articulated buses. Here's one of the first ones, brand new and awaiting service. This crib room was named Kalgoorlie, which is what Kalgoorlie was known as when Paddy Hennon discovered gold there in 1893. My grandfather, who was a ganger on the railways, told the story that this cutting at West Leadville was dug by hand, teams of men using shovels and wheelbarrows. Thank <laughs> you. 
The main gate at the Karakata Cemetery is located right across the road from the train station. The showground station was used basically just once a year for the Royal Show. Earth Moving Equipment is preparing the new bus station to replace this station. We are now about halfway through our journey at Claremont Station. Claremont was the trendy place to be, especially if you wore a top hat. Not too many people would remember that Cottesloe had its own branch line, servicing the Cottesloe flour mill. 
The train has two wagons loaded with flower bags. In this fuzzy image, we can make out a white class waiting in the Cottesloe yard. North Fremantle had a small facility for servicing locomotives and wagons.
Fremantle as our terminus. After a quick look around, we will board a train heading back to Perth, celebrating the end of an era which will happen in just a few days time. This is the Cottesloe flour mill where that goods train was loaded up.
after Friday of this week, the trains will disappear. Our story does not end here. Unknown to anybody at that time, there really was light at the end of the tunnel. In 1983, following a change of government, the Fremantle line was reopened. Then, the entire system was electrified and expanded in 1991. Today, in 2018, we now have lines to Butler via Joondalup, a line to Mandurah, Thornley, with a line to the airport under construction and a line to Ellabrook being promised. May our children and our children's children continue to be served by efficient modern railway services in Perth City.